Bennett. Eric and Lori, our investigation found the oil routes and the shipping estimates were being kept secret from first responders for months. After initially saying there was no issue, tonight the state admits they made a mistake. If you trace the tracks in Lafayette, you'll find everything from corn syrup to ethanol. But occasionally, a more dangerous substance heads this way. From what I know of it, it passes through our area going towards Indianapolis. The crude does? Yeah. The box so, crude? Box and crude. And so if you think of it in terms of a train full of gasoline, it's more flammable. Unlike traditional crude, Bakken oil is thinner, more volatile, more like jet fuel. Oh, mon Dieu! Oh, mon Dieu! Oh, my God! Bakken oil has been involved in a handful of explosive derailments. This July 2013 blast in Quebec killed 47 people. Subsequent derailments in North Dakota and Virginia spared lives, but led the U.S. government to issue a safety warning in January that the oil may be more flammable than traditional crude. In May, an executive order followed requiring that rail companies tell states when, where, and how often the oil is moved by rail. And last year, we had about 300,000 Balkan oil cars came through our county. 300,000? 300, 300,000 came through. And how often were you notified that that was happening? Not a single time. LaPorte Hazmat Director Jeff Hamilton has recorded video of what he says are Bakken oil trains passing through with no advance warning. The, the diamonds that's on the side, the red diamond, tells us what's on those trains. The order also says rail carriers must assist the states in notifying emergency responders in affected counties, sure something Hamilton says sure didn't happen. There's been no email sent out, no nothing. That's what uh, uh, we're all saying. Hey, we're supposed to get at least notified a bit. Uh, so. And it's not happening. Yeah, not, I haven't got one yet. That was until we started demanding answers. Our investigation found the state withheld information about tens of millions of gallons of Bakken crude oil being shipped through at least 12 Indiana counties. Is there any time this week where you guys might be able to talk to us about this on camera? We tried to get an explanation from the Indiana Department of Homeland Security, but after weeks of phone calls and emails, a spokesman declined to be interviewed and wrote, counties have been and are being notified with information about Bakken crude oil rail transportation. Except at the time, that wasn't true. The spokesman sent me that email at 10.52 a.m. on October the 8th. A separate email obtained by IT Mate shows the counties weren't notified until 11.38 that morning, almost an hour later. And when they did finally receive the information, including oil routes and weekly shipping estimates, it was dated June 3rd, meaning the state sat on the information for four months. When we finally pressed the state again, the spokesman admitted the mistake, writing, there was an internal delay at IDHS with respect to the first notification. It was not evaluated as efficiently as it could have been, and as a result, was not forwarded to the local responders as quickly as IDHS would have liked. Which is kind of, I'm sorry, that's nonsense, because we're the ones that's going to have to respond to this. One railroad notification shows the oil travels through some Indiana counties as often as 20 times per week. If you're bringing stuff through town and our officials don't know about it, you're in the wrong. But not everyone believes the notifications are crucial. From a firefighting perspective, for us, it really doesn't make any difference. We're still going to approach it the same way as we would any other flammable liquid fire. To address some of the concerns, rail companies like CSX are now holding safety seminars for first responders, like this one in Indianapolis. Still, the information remains closely guarded. Well, CSX believes that that information should be kept confidential uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, some of it is commercially sensitive to us and to our customers. We've been lucky that we've not had anything significant here. But, the, you know, there's always that risk, and that's what we have to prepare for. Since we started asking questions, the state has received two more notifications from rail companies. Local responders told us the state also recently held a conference call, but gave no explanation for withholding that information. Our investigation continues online at wishtv.com, where we have information about where the oil travels in surrounding states. Tomorrow night at 6, we dive into another problem, leaking tank cars used to haul the oil and other hazardous materials that are still on the tracks. Bennett Haberly, 24-Hour News 8.